Inheritance versus composition is really one of those topics that gets a lot of people confused because it's not always straightforward to know what to use in any situation. So let's start by opening our favorite IDE. And by the way, I'm not going to feed you the same boring examples that all articles and videos are using. So we have these two schedules and I will demonstrate how we can model the schedule concept with both inheritance and composition. As you can see, since we lack a common base class, they can't be used interchangeably. This is an issue because the client of a schedule don't necessarily care what type it's dealing with. So let's fix that real quick with creating a basic schedule base containing the created property and forces its subtypes to implement the is due method. Now the daily and end of week schedules just need to inherit from this base. And in the process, we eliminate a lot of duplicate code. We can now assign both the daily and the end of week types to the same variable as long as its type is the shared base class. Our change also supports the open close principle. If we want to extend our functionality and provide a weekly schedule, we don't have to modify existing code. We'll just create a new class and inherit from the base. New classes can also evolve separately from the others. So with a new weekly subtype, we can provide a parameterized constructor. To demonstrate the polymorphic abilities we just gained, let me just quickly instantiate the new class and create a method that only requires an instance of the base class. This is exactly what I was talking about before with the client using a schedule. The something method doesn't care about the concrete implementation, it just needs a schedule type to function correctly. This works well and may be exactly what you want, but you need to be aware of the fragile base class issue. With inheritance comes tight coupling and that essentially means any change to the base class may ripple down into its subclasses. This can either be noticeable, like when we add a non-default constructor, or in a more subtle manner, say an abstract method is no longer abstract but just overridable or virtual in C-sharp terms. This can cause problems and hard to find bugs. There's also an added layer of complexity because you somewhat need to know the inner workings of a base class. Now let's look at how we can model the exact same schedule concept with composition. I'll just make some room here and paste in our two previous schedule classes. By using composition, we don't think in terms of is a relation, such as a daily schedule is a schedule. Instead, we think of it as a schedule has a time to be triggered. So we can get rid of both schedules and just let it take an I trigger time. Now we also follow the inversion of control principle because the scheduler client is providing the schedule time trigger instead of the schedule newing it up itself. This goes hand in hand with using dependency injection containers. So let's take a second to create a new interface and we can make it take a parameter if needed. Then we just need to create a field for it and delegate the responsibility of determining when to trigger to our injected component. At this point, our schedule class is actually complete. It has no dependency on any concrete type and composition really allows us to create this flexible software. Right now, we don't have any concrete types. So for this to work, we need to implement our time triggers as separate classes. So let's just create the daily and the end of week trigger. And obviously we don't really care about the actual implementation. So we're just gonna let these throw not implemented exception. Now let's compare the two approaches and see how composition looks when creating new instances of a schedule. So for this, we'll have a second something method that takes our schedule class. And then we new up a single schedule. Notice the difference from using inheritance. With composition, we provide what the schedule requires as compared to inheritance where its behavior is baked into it. If you want to change the schedule's behavior, then we just pass it another concrete type as opposed to creating a whole new schedule. You've probably noticed we still don't have a weekly schedule yet. To extend functionality with composition, we simply create another class implementing the Interface. The components can also evolve on their own, taking dependencies by themselves. So here we take the day of week and we can imagine that it's used inside the is due method. Let's see it in action. We'll just swap out one trigger for another and pass it the value this new trigger is expecting. Right, so that's basically inheritance and composition. But one last thing, there's no rule against mixing the two approaches. For instance, take our end of week trigger. It's essentially a hierarchical subtype of the weekly trigger. So let me just demonstrate how we can mix these two approaches. The end of week class will inherit from the weekly trigger, allowing us to clean up the class a bit more. So that is pretty much it. I hope you got a better understanding of when to use what and how they complement each other and how they're different.